Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service in San Diego. I wanted to give you an update of the water year in our past winter precipitation and temperatures, and of course the rest of the spring and the summer outlook, which was just updated on April 17th. Here's the latest U.S. drought monitor. We work closely with multiple agencies across the country to produce this map here. Uh, unfortunately, the drought remains extreme in our desert areas, but we've seen some improvement back down to severe drought level two for much of Southwest California. This is a drought history showing recent droughts across Southwest California. You can see this drought here in 2025 abruptly developed in December of 2024 due to our record dry start to the water year or rainy season. Here are some of the numbers across the region. Uh, San Diego is in the upper left-hand corner where my picture is, 4.19 inches, which is well short of the normal you see on the far right. And this is much less than last year or the year before, 2023-24, a very wet year. Take a look at your location uh, across Southwest California and see how your area is doing. When we rank the driest we were the driest start up until about February, and then we finally got some rain and snow in February and March. You can see we're not quite the driest, but the desert Southwest almost saw their driest on record. So here's a look at precipitation up to date since October 1. That's the start of our rainy season. You can see our Southwest corner is about 50% of average and our desert region less than 30% of what they should receive. So this is compared to the long-term 30-year averages. Northern California and Oregon did really well, much above average. And you can see the eastern part of Colorado on the front range also did well. So December through February is our traditional rain season. And that's when we really fell short. Precipitation and very warm temperatures, especially uh, over our mountains and deserts. If you look at the water year as a whole, you can see that uh, we fell short. Um, we are about 50% of average for most of Southwest California. Uh, remarkable is the warm temperatures. So when you don't have precipitation, you don't have storms, really can result in mild conditions, mild winters, and much above average temperatures across much of California, especially the interior mountains and deserts. March was a savior, maybe not a miracle March, but we were much above normal, especially in the Southwest as shown here. Uh, and that kept our temperatures much below normal as well. Snowfall for the season. Now this one's important. So this helps, you know, delay our fire season. This helps promote growth and then even some water supply. So snowfall for the season as shown here, was basically 50 to 80 inches over our bigger mountains like the San Bernardino and San Gabriels. Now, when you look at this year, this photo on the top was taken April 13th. This is San Gregonio Mountain. It was comparable to June 13th of 2023. So that was a very wet and snowy year. So this year we've already you know, seen rapid snow melt and we had limited snowpack about 50 to 60% of where it should have been. So that's why um, we are much below average for the snowpack. Now, if you look at April as a whole, yes, it's been mild. Uh, inland areas, especially our deserts, have been much above normal for April so far. Uh, this goes back 30 days into mid-March. And precipitation, I know it's supposed to start drying out in April, but precipitation has been below average as well. And that is shown on the right-hand side by all that brown shaded area for Southern California. So uh, limited green up for Southern California. So even though it is green now and we've had some cool temperatures, uh, the green up, the grass, the growth, the flowers, the weeds uh, will have limited growth as we go through uh, and pretty fast curing is expected. 
the water year as a whole, uh, we can see in Southern California, we're in the orange shaded there. So 50 to 60% of normal. That's not record dry, but there were parts of the desert Southwest that were record dry. That's shown on the right-hand side. This is October through March. If we look at temperatures, while most of the West was above normal this past water year and winter, you can look at San Diego County in particular, and that region and the Coachella Valley were record warmth. So not just dry, but record warmth. That's important as we go into the spring, the fire season, and the drought conditions. What's causing this? Well, the storm track for this winter looks like this. So from October through mid-April, storms have been missing us going to our north and east. It's also why we had so many Santa Ana winds in January. We had this winter alone 18 Santa Ana winds. If you look at the core of our winter, this is the critical time, December through March, the storm track was to our north and east. And that's also when we had all those Santa Ana winds. Uh, there were eight Santa Ana winds just in January. Now, March wasn't a miracle, but we had a slight change in the jet stream that was dramatically uh, different from what we've been seeing most of the water year rainy season. So this brought cooler temperatures and storms across central Southern California. And this really brought the bulk of our precipitation and snow uh, to Southern California. Now the weather pattern as a whole, if you look at the weather pattern in March and zoom out, uh, this is what it looked like here. Uh, storm track, enough to bring storms into central and Southern California as shown here. Now uh, let's take a look at the outlook. The official May outlook, which was just released on April 17th, calls for normal precipitation and we don't see a lot of precipitation in Southern California in May. Uh, so drier than normal conditions for Northern California, where they sometimes do see precipitation in May. Overall, the Great Basin, Southwest and West, warmer than average is expected for May. So that's a factor with uh, our limited snowpack, limited precipitation and limited green up. How about the uh, spring outlook uh, into summer? So uh, it's looking like hotter than average, hotter than average. This was just released on April 17th, hotter than average conditions across the Great Basin, the desert Southwest. And when we get into the monsoon season or the summer season, uh, which takes us in July, it looks like it could be above average, but only for the extreme Southwest as shown here. So more heat waves in the spring to early summer, hotter than normal conditions. The question is, how does that affect our fire season? The official summer outlook looks like this, uh, June through August, much above average is likely more heat waves, a monsoon that is suppressed, still active in the desert Southwest, but suppressed, meaning it doesn't expand across California and the Great Basin. So hotter than average conditions. So to answer our question about the fire outlook, this is issued by the predictive services. We do expect above average conditions because of what we just showed. The expanding heat, the more heat waves, the suppressed monsoon initially in the summer into the deserts. Uh, hotter conditions, the limited green up, the dry winter, 50% of average, well, this shows it here. So June and July, especially July, could be quite active for our fire season as shown here. So an early start to the fire season well before our typical late summer and Santa Ana season in the fall. Here's some resources for you for the heat waves coming up. I encourage you to check out the heat risk on here. And then uh, for water and precipitation, there's also resources on here as well. You can look back uh, for total water numbers and you can track temperatures across the region as well. Uh, we're also on X and Facebook. And thank you everyone. Uh, this is my last uh, video production.